Hi, this is Ryan Sadam, Chief Experience Officer at Client Savvy. Welcome to another CXPS knowledge sharing module. This week, we bring to you Michelle Rashawn, and she is talking to you about the ecosystem of experience. All of us know how hard it can be to try to teach and equip our staff about client experience, employee experience, brand experience, all the different experiences. And Michelle helps bring together all of that into one unifying language and set of behaviors that makes it easy for our teams to move forward with. Before I turn it over to Michelle, I do want to introduce just a couple of important points. First, if you are new to the CXPS community and you have not yet joined us, I really hope you will do so. You can uh, learn more about our community at clientexperience.org. Those who are in the community know that we have an online exercise through the Mural app that goes along with this knowledge sharing module. So there's great activities and ways to extend your learning as, long, er, as well as your engagement with the rest of the CXPS community. So I do hope you will join us in the Mural. Check your inbox for the Mural link if you're a member or on the website. And finally, if you're watching or listening to this session, the week that it launches, we invite you to join us this Friday at one o'clock Eastern for a live Q&A with Michelle. And you'll also have opportunity to get into breakout rooms and network and uh, drive deeper discussion with your peers within the CXPS community. Again, these online activities and the Q&A are reserved for CXPS members. We do hope you'll join us. Before I turn this over to Michelle, I wanna take just a moment and say thank you to all of our sponsors. We really could not do this without you and we appreciate your continued support of this community. And I ask you, the audience, to explore and look at the solutions that they have to help you on your experience journeys as well. All right, again, thank you so much sponsors. And now I would like to turn this over to Michelle. Please take it away. Hello everybody. My name is Michelle Rochon and I'm the creative director at Workplace Culture Store. I've been teaching in the executive classroom, especially for professional services firms for 20 years. Uh, I spent that time creating revelatory experiences for learners across that community. And last year, I packaged them for a wider audience at my on online store and distance learning center, Workplace Culture Store. I am honored to be participating in the work that Client Savvy and CXPS 2020 are doing. I am here to talk to you about the ecosystem of experience. Here's something you might recognize. These are the four branches of experience as we currently identify them. CX, BX, EX, and RX. One of the most common themes in discussions about X is the relationship between the experience of employees and the experience of clients and how those two are connected, if they're connected at all. During the kickoff of the CXPS virtual conference, a number of people brought up this topic, the old internal versus external argument, hoping we would one day find a tangible connection between them once and for all. In my explorations of this burning question, I've concluded that this whole puzzle came about because these two experiences have always been thought of as separate things and more importantly, dramatically different things. Clients must have a pleasant experience because pleasant experiences compel them to continue working with us. Employees must have an unpleasant experience because they have to work and work is unpleasant. If it's not unpleasant, it no longer counts as work. Even if you have entered this century and you know that this is not accurate, the trouble with identifying X's separately remains. It gives us the impression that we can choose one over the other and save time and resources that way. We favor the options that produce obvious and immediate revenue returns. And once that's been accomplished, we'll have more resources to tackle the others, which are a lower priority at this moment anyway. What we discover, however, is that that time never seems to come. That's because experience is more interconnected and interdependent than we think. Experience relies on the most pervasive and essential determinants of the quality of human life. Values, 
beliefs, behavior, and language. Experience is more like an ecosystem than a set of business categories. An ecosystem relies on things we can't always quantify or predict. Something we learn painfully whenever parts of the whole are taken away. The whole begins to flounder in their absence. And a forest, for instance, or a marsh, a lake, anywhere that life thrives, from the largest sequoias down to the smallest single-celled organism, everything plays a part in the health of the ecosystem. If you remove even small things that forest suffers, the interconnectedness of X similarly demands a more holistic and sustainable paradigm. With X, the energy source isn't sunlight or water. For the ecosystem of X, the energy comes from anything capable of making a behavioral choice, which means all of us. That energy is empathy, a sense of grander purpose, passion for life and community, kindness, generosity, and creativity. Taking on one X at a time doesn't simplify things, quite the contrary. When you approach them separately, your people have to speak different experience languages, depending on who they're with at any given moment, which actually complicates their task. If you are a person that speaks multiple languages or you've ever tried to learn a new one, you know that switching from one to the other is probably the hardest part because of how the human brain works. The most efficient way to create new experience for your clients is to create a behavioral language of experience for everyone and immerse your employees in that language. And that is done through evolving an X-driven culture because culture shapes behavior. Culture is made up of values, beliefs, norms, and language. You can create a culture of experience for everyone who encounters your brand, clients and employees included for the same or less investment than one X at a time. Culture is a guidance system for human behavior, especially in the workplace. It tells people what they have to do to reach a goal and at the same time determines what makes that goal worthwhile. Everything you might want or expect from a member of your team originates with the wisdom and resources provided by the culture of your organization. If they wanna know what your organization values, they don't read about it on your website. They pay attention to the things you celebrate and acknowledge and spend your time and resources on. If they want to know what your culture believes, they pay attention to how you solve problems, how you address issues and the stories you tell. If they wanna know your norms, your standards of behavior, they observe your leaders who set a behavioral example. If they wanna know the language of your culture, they don't consult the branding book. They listen to what people say. Then they internalize what they heard and they repeat it to coworkers and clients. Experience is so much easier than we make it out to be. Maybe because it's new, we think it has to be complicated. I discovered this years ago when I was a widow raising two boys. They had to help around the house more than most kids, and sometimes that cut into their fun times with friends. So I found ways to make it a more rewarding experience. I learned that everything we do can be made better with just a little imagination. It doesn't require more time or money. It is the most affordable differentiator available to service providers. And it doesn't just apply to pre-adolescents who have to do more chores around the house. Enterprise rent a car. A lovely customer service rep was chatting up with my husband this winter as he rented his monthly vehicle to go out and lead the team doing bridge inspections. He told her he was going to buy an orange Jeep as his next car because he always wanted an orange Jeep. I don't know why, he just did. Very next time he went to Enterprise, there was an orange Jeep waiting for him. She remembered their conversation and arranged for him to try out his dream car. And then he paid that experience forward to a bridge client. The way it works in Canada is that there are many stakeholders in a First Nation infrastructure project, including the First Nation itself. Local and provincial governments work together with the community to make those projects happen. The First Nation lives on an island with one bridge to get on and off that island. We have a lot of water in Canada. So they were rehabilitating that bridge when COVID hit and Brian, the lead bridge inspection engineer, took a moment to contact the chief and ask him what he thought about it. 
Just ask him what he thought. That's all. During COVID-19, the bridge had to be closed, but they wanted the installation of a component at the top of the bridge truss to go forward immediately. Brian went out to inspect the bridge. Brian is a big believer in X. He had all the necessary approvals, but thought he should check with the chief just as a courtesy. He called and asked, is it okay to proceed? What do you think? And the chief thanked him. Enterprise ran a car. Very interesting story as it turns out. Global vehicle rental provider and an excellent example of a company with a holistic X strategy. A few years back, they had someone have an unpleasant experience renting a vehicle from them. And that person wrote a scathing review on some sort of Yelp site. The top brass at Enterprise took that review to heart and they changed everything, but not customer service. Enterprise's new mission statement is not what you might expect. Exceed our customers' expectations and best service provider don't actually appear until the second and third lines. The first line of their mission is to provide our employees with a great place to work. This is not because enterprise is willing to sacrifice customer satisfaction to make employees happy, quite the contrary. It's because enterprise understands that these two things are not mutually exclusive. They understand that changing the experience of employees is a more reliable and sustainable way to change the experience of clients. Enterprise knows that if their employees who work closely with their customers in detailed face-to-face -face interactions every day are immersed in a nurturing, pleasant behavioral language in which their work experience is crafted to be personally rewarding, the employees will feel good about their work and that experience will be passed on to customers. If you visit an enterprise location to engage with their services, you'll notice the authentic joy the team seems to exude. They'll banter playfully with one another and with customers. I've noticed this at dozens of locations and you'll discover a few exceptions to that rule on their customer testimonial sites. Especially when you've just got off three back-to-back -back connecting flights and you just want your car so you can get to your hotel and go to sleep, that pleasantness will make all the difference. Creating an experience is an act of generosity. The best part of it is that you're giving things that you can't possibly run out of. The resources of X are inexhaustible. The more of them you use, the more you have. Creating an experience for an employee or a client is guaranteed to leave you with more than what you started with. And with very few rare exceptions, generosity is met with more generosity. Even if one or two unscrupulous people take advantage of this philosophy along the way, that doesn't change anything. The majority of the times you give, it'll come back to you. In an organization that gives the inexhaustible, employees will be more generous with what they've got and clients will come back for more. Give things that you can't possibly run out of, like enthusiasm, laughter, banter, joy, acts of kindness, attention, empathy, listening, creative ideas, care, interest in what they think, what they dream about for the future of their organization, playfulness. Time for a story. A traveler comes to a village carrying nothing more than an empty cooking pot. Upon his arrival, the villagers are unwilling to share any of their food. Then the traveler goes to a stream and fills the pot with water, drops in a large stone and places it over a fire. One of the villagers becomes curious and asks what he's doing. The traveler says he's making stone soup, which tastes wonderful and he'd be delighted to share, although it still needs a little bit of garnish, which is missing to improve the flavor. The villager who wants a bowl of soup doesn't mind parting with a few carrots, so these are added. Another villager walks by inquiring about the pot and the traveler again mentions the stone soup, which has not yet reached its full potential. The villager hands him a little bit of seasoning. More and more villagers walk by, each adding another ingredient. Finally, the stone is removed from the pot and a delicious pot of soup is enjoyed by all. The soup is X and it doesn't run out. It's a bottomless pot. The more you eat, the more you make, and the more you have. But in many modern organizations, the soup never gets made because we behave as if there's only so much of it to go around. 
the soup sounds delicious, but we have to finish all our other internal soups before trying this one. We can't make more than one bowl of soup at a time. We might look like we, not know, we don't know what we're doing. We would rather make soup for our clients than for our employees. That will drive revenue, which is what really matters. Then we'll have what we need to make soup for our employees. If we make soup for the employees, they'll eat the soup and have no more, more further motivation to give to any to the clients. We work in a complex industry and our clients don't want soup, they want results. We can't deliver results of soup at the same time. You can play many roles in X. You can be the traveler who promises something amazing that frankly sounds a little out there. As an X evangelist, that's the role I often play. You can be the villager who takes a small leap of faith with their carrots and turnips and contributes. You can be the villager who notices that the paradigm works and go into your organization and make little bowls of soup all over the place until others start to see that it works. And before long, you have one big bowl of soup that never runs out. Thank you. Michelle, thank you so much for bringing us that uh, a great insight and all of those stories. I know we all learn well. You shared a lot of metaphors. Those will be great tools in our toolbox to bring with us as we spread the word about creating experience ecosystems. Again, those of you who are members of the CXPS community, don't forget to check out the mural activity this week and join us on Friday, one o'clock Eastern for the live Q&A with Michelle. And those of you who are not yet members of our community, we invite you to come explore and join us. And you can do that at clientexperience.org. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you on Friday in our networking time together.